If you're coming from Jupiter and if you're using Marimo maybe for the first time, then it's not unlikely that you're gonna hit this one error. What's happening is that I've got a data frame variable over here and I'm trying to overwrite it down below. And that's not allowed in Marimo, which prompts this red text to appear and you might wonder what's up with that. It's actually a conscious choice why we don't allow for this in Marimo and here's why. When you use Marimo, you are signing a contract that says that you won't redefine the same variable across two different cells. By agreeing to this, for reasons that I'll explain in a bit, Marimo can actually work its magic. It's a constraint that allows us to take your notebook, run it as a web app. We can also add UI components that can interact with your own code. These notebooks can also easily run from the command line, and you also end up with a notebook that's free of hidden state bugs. As a bonus, you'll also find that you end up with cleaner code that also tends to be easier to reason about. Now to explain this above error, I wrote a little bit of extra code over here. You can see that I've got these two variables over here and that there's a cell below where I'm calculating these two variables that are being added together. And I guess you could argue the main thing that makes Marimo quite unique is that I can change one of the variables. And if I were to run this cell again, then this cell below automatically updates. In this particular case, I'm not doing any heavy computation. So it's actually great that it updates automatically. If this were a heavy computation, I would configure this a little bit differently. But the main thing is that we have this reactive aspect to it. I make a change here, cell can automatically update there. Now, in order for this to work, Marimo is actually doing a little bit of pre-processing on your behalf. Let's call this cell A, let's call this cell B, and let's call this cell C. Then what's happening in this case is Marimo is checking all the cells and all the variables that are being defined. And it's using that to make a graph that explains the order of execution. And in this particular case, cell A and cell B would have to run before you're able to run cell C. And the simple reason is that variable A over here is being used in the cell down below. Another interesting consequence of this, by the way, is that the order of the cells no longer matters. So I could maybe put these cells down below over here. And, and again, all of this works because Marimo is able to infer the order. But let's maybe mess that up a bit by saying, okay, but A is now equal to eight, for example. If I were not to think from the perspective of this cell over here, right, this cell needs a variable A, but how is this cell going to infer whether or not it should take the variable A that's defined over here or the variable A defined over here? Now, the reason that Jupyter does allow for this is because Jupyter allows you to rerun a cell multiple times and to override the state of the variable in memory. And that's a way you could go about it. The downside is that this does lead to a lot of bugs. If you're able to rerun cells, it becomes a lot harder to reason about what is in the variable. And Marimo chooses to be very explicit about that by demanding this reactive nature between the cells. And you do get a lot of benefits from this, but it also does mean that we do require you to write your code a little bit differently. So in this particular case, what are some ways to maybe deal with this? One direct thing you could do is you could maybe choose a different variable name. So you could say something like, oh, this is a data frame with features or something like that. And that'll totally be fine. Another thing you can also choose to do is maybe not do this in a separate cell. And especially in the case of a data frame, if you're setting stuff up, uh, it might actually make sense to just have one cell that reads in the data frame. And then within a single cell, you are able to override a variable. As far as Marimo is concerned, anything you do within a cell is pretty much fair game because we really only care about the state of the variable at the end. At the end of the cell, what is the state of the variable? And those variables should not change anymore. Now, since we're talking about data frames here, one general tip that I have is just to use method chaining as much as you can. The really great thing about modern data frame APIs is that you can chain a lot of these commands together and that kind of starts constructing a bit of a pipeline and it really makes sense to chunk those together. Especially if you're using Polaris, you get so many performance benefits by chaining all of these commands together and then having the query engine figure out how to run the command that I do really recommend thinking in these chains of data frame operations in general and doing so will also reduce the number of variables that you need. Finally, and even better, what you can also do is you can chunk some of these commands together into a separate little function that is well-scoped and clearly defined. And then you can call the pipe method on a data frame and just reuse this function inside of that. And this is a really nice way to make these composable kind of like Lego bricks for your Polar's pipelines. The nice thing about these functions is that they're also nice and stateless, which also reduces the number of variables that you have to create. And it also reduces the need to override variables. If you write your code in this style, it really becomes a whole lot easier to reason about it. But most of all, because this is a Marimo notebook and because Marimo can assume that there's this reactive style of writing your code, you also get lots of other benefits, like for example, these user interface elements. So I can construct a slider. I can move the slider around and cells will automatically update 
and I'm able to combine my data science code, my data wrangling code, together with user interface elements. And all of that combined just really makes for a very compelling and productive notebook. But don't reassign variables. That's something we don't allow. For good reason. <laughs>